All right, guys, what's going on? It's Mike Diaz. This is Carlos from Condor Speed Shop. We're down in Florida. In which city? Oakland Park. Oakland Park, Florida. These guys make tons of parts for the BMW chassis from the 2002 all the way up to the E90s, right? That's right. Going all the way up to the E90 chassis. So we want to show you guys a couple of parts. These guys have been real supportive of uh, my racing program and, and my years behind the steering wheel. We want to put together a cool video, kind of give you guys some information on Carlos and what they got going over here on Condor Speed Shop. So let's check out some product. We started out with uh, designing products for the E30, but we're gonna start. I'm gonna start talking about the 2002 because uh, it's the you know the oldest uh, car that we make products for. Yeah. E10 chassis. Um, we make basically uh, everything on the rear suspension and front suspension that moves. Uh, we make bushings for it. So we do the subframe bushings. Um, these are differential bushings make for it, um, trailing arm bushings, and then all the front suspension, uh, these are called, uh, I believe, track rod bushings, and we do all that, it's a lot of moving parts in the front suspension. Yeah, in the uh, 2002? Yep, yeah. very old old technology, uh, but, you know, it's all soft rubber, and, you know, you can replace everything with what we have. Look at those back there. These are shifter bushings for a 2002. <laughs> nice. Um, so you can get everything feeling better from yeah. the shifter to the front end to the rear end. That's right. Transmission, engine mounts, uh -huh. everything under 2000. Yep. We also make brake lines. I don't have a full kit here, but we do make a full line of brake lines and the clutch line for the 2002 also. Uh, and then we do have uh, engine mounts. And the engine mounts for the 2002 are pretty awesome. They're actually one of my favorite uh, products that we make. So that's it. That's what we do for the 2002. And you have, you have a lot of stuff that people don't even know that you make. You got tie downs, yeah. tie down hooks, you got drilled out light and weight uh, handles, which obviously every ounce counts uh, yeah. when you're doing an entire car build. Yeah, these are for, this is all E30 stuff here. Uh, we, we do have the door handles that are drilled. Those are awesome. I like these. It's not really so much about uh, the the weight, but more about the look. It just looks yeah, real look cool. Neat. It's like racy. They look neat, you know? for sure. These come in super handy. You you bolt these onto the bottom of your sh shocks, and uh, you can tie down your trailer, tie down your car onto your trailer very easily with these. We use them all the time whenever we go to the track. Right. Super useful. Those help out too if you guys got polished wheels and polished lips. You don't have to strap around your beautiful barrels that's and, true and lips you can hook straight to that and not have to worry about scratching lips like myself that's right there's an e30 uh subframe down here you got some cool goodies on this yep. you were showing me earlier we have an e30 subframe we'll put it right here um we have the rear trailing arm bushings that we make these are the regular rear trailing arm bushings which are just it's a uhmw with an aluminum sleeve and uh, it replaces all the rubber it's great for uh any type of spirited driving um, but a new product that we came out with recently is an adjustable rear trailing arm bushing. If you look, it has a hole off center. Um, and the reason for that is when you install it, here we have one installed, you can actually move the, uh, the bushing and, it, and the, the whole uh, trailing arm, this is the OEM bushing, but the whole trailing arm will, will move and it will change your camber and toe if you have them installed on the inside and the outside, everything will move and it will move your actual wheel and change your camber settings. And these are nice because you can, um, you can fine tune the adjustment of your, the rear end of your car. Um, they don't give you a ton of adjustment. It's a, about half a degree in each direction, which is enough to kind of fine tune stuff. Right. So these are super cool. Come with like a little uh, like spanner, spanner inch. Yeah, that you can reach in there and adjust. And uh, this is our first gen um, bushing. We we have a second gen that we're going to come out with soon. Uh, Just always improving on everything yeah, you can. Make it, we made a few little adjustments to the next version. What are these ones here? These brass guys. These are brass caliper guide bushings. Uh, these are designed for all the ATE uh, brakes. They work on a whole bunch of different cars: um, E30, E36, E46, E90, even newer than that. It's another piece that replaces the rubber bushing. Um, you, you know, you take the rubber out, you push this in, there's a little uh, circlip that goes on the end. You make sure you grease them with the high temperature grease. And uh, there's a steel pin that runs inside. And basically, as your brakes wear out, 
uh, the actual caliper moves and slides on that little uh, pin and um, it c helps even out your caliper, w uh, your brake pad wear. It's a nice addition to any type of car that sees regular track use. Um, and then we have a new version, which isn't, it's not uh, new to the market, but it's new to us. And basically what happens is, we run these on our Spec E30s, a steel shaft that goes inside, when we grease it with high temperature grease, um, it gets dirty and dusty and like we have to go back and take everything apart and re clean it out and re-grease it. Um, so we, we've we kind of come up with these that are going to have these little caps on them. So uh, basically, yeah. once you install it and you grease everything, you keep this little cap on, then everything will slide. And it's just a little dust cap to protect the inside from getting too uh, dusty, grimy sand. Right, right. Um, so that's a, a nice it's thing. It's just we, longevity. Yeah, that's a new product. And you go all the way down. So, and it, like, this is cool because I want you guys to see this because a lot of people know you guys. You guys are commonly known for your bushings, for your engine mounts, your mm -hmm. trans mounts, things like that. The stuff that they don't really know is that you guys are doing stuff like steering shafts, eyeball uh, bushings. That's right. You're doing all this, uh, like the brass fittings for, I believe, the E30 transmissions and stuff for the clutch, yep. the pivot, right? Clutch pivot pin for E30. And right. we also have a, a stainless steel version that's for the uh, E36, I think E34. Um, E46, I think it fits also. So this is something that you shouldn't forget when you're doing any type. Anytime you have a transmission out, you're going to do a clutch. That's definitely an upgrade over the stock plastic piece, which has been known to like fall apart and deteriorate wear out. The time with the yeah, heat they, and just they change the shape. They flatten out. Oh, then you're messing with yeah. your throw on your, yeah, on exactly. your clutch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So o almost every product here really changes the sensitivity of each pedal. I mean, you're talking about your brake pedals, you're talking mm -hmm. about your clutch pedal, and then obviously with all the bushings and stuff, you're creating a better response out of your throttle pedal as well as far as getting that power straight to the back instead of having everything twist. Absolutely. And whatnot. And then we have shifter bushings too, so when you're shifting gears, you can tighten up your shift linkage, all right. that stuff, you can completely replace it with bushings that we have. We have a bunch of um, short shift kits with Z3 and Z4 levers that include our bushings and the Z3 lever and all the a couple OEM pieces to c complete the kit. And then, you know, we have some knobs that will, are part of our kits too. We have a tall weighted knob. There's a weight in it and, and it allows you to kind of shift qu more quickly, a little more easily. And the extra height allows you to keep your hand on the steering wheel and quickly reach down, shift, and grab the steering wheel again. Um, right. And we have a, a shorter version, which a lot of guys like the short version, uh, just because they don't like the way the tall knob looks. Sure, if you're not too concerned about your hand moving back yeah. and forth, throw the smaller one in. You don't have a big. That's right. A bigger shift knob in your car. This has a weight, a thick weight inside of this part here, so it's got a little bit of weight to it. They mm -hmm. both have have some weight to them. I had one in my E46, and it really does change the way that the shifter feels. Along with, so then you have your eyeball bushings yeah your eyeball arms and your bushings this is really cool for the guys out there who are putting e46 arms into your e36 chassis this would be the portion of the eyeball arm that bolts into the 36 but then it has the hex cut in here for the 46 arm so that's really cool when you're doing like the conversions because mm -hmm. back in the day what we would do is we would still use the e36 uh models which is how the e36 arm is then we would take this hex and shave it all the way down on the actual control arm on the control arm and then fit it and in then there. fit it into that yeah. and what would happen is you really start losing a little bit more material and losing a little yeah. bit of strength there it would still work i never broke one yeah but the problem is too you can't get it perfectly round so then no. you, when you press it in here now you could develop a little bit of play exactly and you get a little bit of like shimmy and exactly clicking noises so and then these narrow down also ground clearance and then if you're doing like a V8 swap or something, yeah. I, I experienced a lot more clearance yeah. with my headers. The headers are now on both sides of the car instead of just on the passenger yeah. side of the vehicle. The stock lollipop comes out to like here. So much bigger. Um, yeah. I you have, scrape them, you can hit them. Here you can, you can kind of see. Oh like, yeah, there's like a... Th they would kind of... Then you have the whole carrier that still sticks out. Right. Uh, so that bushing presses into the stock one. Right. And that's offset too for you guys who want to dial in a little bit more caster and things like that in your car. But then you have the big bulky aluminum or steel, steel. mount because yeah. the E30 comes steel, the 36 comes steel, and then the yeah. 46 comes, comes aluminum. aluminum. 
So depending on which one you have, the 46 being the biggest, I believe, of all of them, big, yeah. bulky aluminum yeah. uh, lollipop, um, you can go and cut down on some size and get yourself some better spacing with this, along with custom bushings to fit. We also have a more affordable version of the E46 uh, conversion control arm bushing, which is like this, and it fits in the stock carrier and has right. a, a stainless steel insert that has a hex shape that you can uh, use to install E46 arms in your E30 or E36. That's a real popular piece. The thing about that piece is sometimes the stainless steel insert is actually only one size and we actually cut a slot in it so it expands when you press it into an E46 arm. Right. But sometimes there's two different um, size hex on the E46 arms. There's a 21 millimeter and a 23 millimeter. And we have inserts for this one in 21 and 23 millimeter but for the other one, it's just um, like a pinch it's style. Just, yeah, so it only really fits the 21 mil, and if you're gonna use it with the 23 mil, you're gonna need to shave down the hex mm. a little bit. So you're still gonna get involved with fabrication. A stuff. little bit, but a lot of guys still like that option because it's more affordable. A lot more benefits to these, but the other one is definitely more affordable. Yeah. I recommend saving your pennies and getting some of these. Oh, and then you have the other one of these as well. For you guys who are running like the SLR kits on your 46, but you don't want to pay a bajillion dollars for adjustable lollipops that different companies sell, you can actually get the E46 housing here that they have, another eyeball mm -hmm. arm, and insert the E36 bushing into mm -hmm. it because the SLR angle kit is to the E36 spec. So I was able to press that into mine and then put my SLR arm in there without having to make any kind of modifications at all. It all bolted in and pressed yeah. in, not a single problem at Which all. Which was super nice when you're so easy. upgrading from an E36 to E46, then you don't have to replace your whole angle kit. Nope, nope, you don't have to buy nothing new, you just get that stuff and then it bolts all right back in. This is another thing, I get asked this a lot on my Instagram about reinforcement plates and a lot of people don't know this, but Condor, you guys, make a lot of different reinforcement plates for all kinds of different parts of the chassis. And then when you go on your website, you can even purchase, like like organize the shopping based off of your chassis and stuff. Yes. Every single product that you guys make for that chassis. Yeah. Any reinforcement plate you're trying to find, I recommend looking at Condor first, just because of the quality that you guys are uh, producing. And then obviously all the made in America stuff is a big deal. That's right, everything we have well. is, is made here in the US. Um, we have reinforcements for the E30, front sway bar, uh, engine mount reinforcements. We have reinforcements for the E36, for the front subframe, um, rear trailing arm reinforcements, which is this guy pocket reinforcement. Then we have a yeah. full re uh, rear subframe, um, or actually it reinforces the chassis uh, in the mounting points where the subframe mounts. That's important when you're going to upgrade to solid bushings. Um, and then we have uh, E46 reinforcement kit um, right. which is like a strengthening kit includes everything you need to like strengthen everything back there because those things rip out all the time the guys who had the car before me ripped it out oh really and they went and made their own plates and welded yeah. them all in and, and they're cool they work yeah um but they're not as crisp and clean because they're not cut with the they're uh, laser homemade. machine they're all homemade yeah and so this stuff is something you're talking about buying scuffing up your chassis getting it down to the raw metal setting it in welding it in and being done yeah Super easy, They're, they come you know, ready to weld. Basically, you clean them up a little bit, clean all the undercoating off your chassis, set them up, and then weld them in. I guess my old thing for a while was save as much money on products as you can. Do as much as you can by yourself. Yeah. But what ends up happening is you start spending a lot more time away from the family, the wife, for those of you who have them out there, so wives, make your husband buy condor stuff, <laughs> uh, from all your other responsibilities, and you end up Spending a lot of time you custom fabricating yourself. a plate that you could have just bought for a few extra bucks and yeah. save yourself maybe an hour, two hours of cutting out a plate, finding the shapes and the sizes, because you guys' stuff is all laser cut to the right size, so you get yeah. it right the first time, there's no extra work or anything yeah. like that. Yeah, these are water jet cut, actually. Water jet cut, yeah. okay. It just makes it so much easier, less labor, less time for a few extra bucks. Mm -hmm. What else do you got? Oh, the steering shaft kit. Oh, yes. So, we have two options. Let's talk about the E30 first. This is a simple coupler that replaces the rubber coupler on an E30 steering shaft. And what this does is it actually is a huge improvement over stock. Um, it tightens up your steering, the feedback that you get from the road, it makes everything that much more precise. You get a lot more feedback, you get a little bit of 
um, more, I wouldn't say road noise, but you feel more connected to the road. Absolutely. Um, it tightens it up. It's a re real nice kit. And it's not super expensive, um, but this is definitely something that uh, I would suggest for any type of track car, uh, even for a street car. I had a stock set up on my 36, and I think right when I, I was out on the track sliding around drifting, my power steering started acting up, and then my stock coupler broke. Coupler just snapped on me mid corner and luckily I wasn't going really fast but immediately your steering wheel just gets free and there's no connection to the front wheel so the car just goes wherever it wants to go and then after oh, wow. you put these things in there now all of a sudden you don't have to worry about the rubber breaking or having any kind of issue like right, that right. so that was cool that does make you feel a lot more connected to the road yeah the next option we have is this one <coughs> my favorite <coughs> excuse me which is for the e e36 we actually have an e30 version of this too for guys that want to get rid of all the um, OEM E30 steering uh, couplers. But this is two U-joints with a stainless steel shaft and basically you remove everything that you don't need out of the steering shaft and replace it with this. This is really nice on a E36. This also, <coughs> if I might add, that when you're doing like the V8 swap <coughs> and things like that, this gives you so much more clearance on yeah. the header side. Because with the stock motors, you don't have that problem because there's nothing on that side of it. So what this will do is really stiffen it up and take away any yeah. kind of play or any kind of possibilities really of braking. So it slims it up a lot. And so when you start doing your, your V8 swaps and you start running into header clearance and things like that, this will come in handy. I mean, look at the size difference, it's ridiculous. Yeah, so this is so much slimmer. Stocky 36. Fitting that between the headers versus fitting this in there. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff going on yeah, on that side much, of the car. Yeah, much more slim. Right, and just, it's just so much more strong. I don't know, that's, so, that's redundant, so much more strong. I don't know how else to emphasize yeah. it. Like, this is so much better. Yeah, and the OEM system has one U-joint up top and then has a rubber coupler right here, the mm -hmm. OEM one. So this rubber coupler is actually works as a U-joint. This is actually like a, a UHMW version that we made. What we found is that the rubber version, because it needs to flex, you know, we added this U-joint. So we have dual U-joints and now um, the steering is that much more free and can, you know, move a lot easier on its own. And it really, you know, tightens it up. It feels very yeah. precise. And we have a kit for the E46 also right. that does the same thing. It's much more simple. It doesn't have the shaft. Um, and it's just a single uh, U-joint, but right. it does the same thing. You, you basically remove this whole section off of your E46, mm -hmm. and you put that in place, and it tightens everything up real nice. Yeah, that's what I did on my E46, is I just have the one installed, because the E46 has a, what do you call this? Double D? Uh, yeah, it has a double D rod on it, and so you can connect it to there, and then this side could either go to your steering shaft, or you can take it off and flip it and put it onto your firewall, and then put the other <laughs> side onto uh, this, the, the pinion gear on your rack as well. Mm -hmm. And really, like, the common thing you guys are really shooting for is really to make the driver more connected through the car to the road. Absolutely. So through everything, through your steering, through your suspension bushings, through your engine mounts, through your trans mounts, every everything. single product almost that you offer is about tightening up the car, having that translation to the road. Yes. And being able to fill yeah. it. The more, the more connected you are to the road, whether you're you know drifting yeah. or you're racing on track or you're doing time attack, the more you can feel what the car feels, the faster you're going to be. The car will feel better, it'll handle better, and you'll be able to, you know, kind of react to whatever situation you're in because you can feel everything happening. Right, instantly. right. Predictability creates comfort. Comfort creates faster lap times. That's true. And and better reaction times and things like that. Like yeah, you you, you know what your car's gonna do, and so this stuff makes your car more predictable, which essentially in the end can potentially make you a faster driver. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. And I've, I've personally experienced it. It does make the car feel yeah. so much better. The difference in going from like your stock bushings to this stuff. What would be a good thing for you to touch on, I would think, is why you guys aren't doing like necessarily a solid aluminum bushing for like your subframes versus like there's a lot of companies out there who do make solid aluminum bushings, but there's a reason why you guys don't. Mm -hmm. The material that we use, UHMW, although it is a very hard material, it still gives a little bit it still absorbs a little bit of vibration it still absorbs a little bit of movement and with solid aluminum bushings when you have a subframe mounted to a solid aluminum bushing mounted to the chassis and you're you know you have 
a bunch of horsepower, five, 600 horsepower, going through the whole drivetrain and everything. You always need something to just kind of give a little bit. You need uh, something to kind of absorb a little bit of the impact between a clutch kick or um, a standing start in a race. You don't want to just have everything aluminum or steel hard welded, hard mounted. It, you need to have a little bit of give in there. Right, saves you a lot in your powertrain. You meet the gap between ridiculously stiff with the metal stuff yeah. and completely soft with the urethane stuff. Because yeah. urethane will also, correct me if I'm wrong, it deteriorates over time with oil and heat, right? It can. You know, certain types of urethane tend to have issues. The benefit of UHMW in any type of moving part and non-moving part is that it's, well, in the moving parts, it's self-lubricating. So when you install it, you don't need to use any type of grease oil mm. you just install it dry and it just everything moves smoothly right it's a, a benefit we have over polyurethane another benefit is polyurethane is made as like a two-part i guess it starts out as two different parts of liquid that they pour together and through a chemical reaction they pour it into a mold it gets hard and then they pull the, the bushings or mounts out of that mold which is fine but our stuff starts as a solid piece of UHMW that we take and we put it on a CNC mill or lathe and we machine out, you know, the products, the shapes that we need. Um, and they're all, you know, CNC machined to, you know, be which, whatever we need them to be. You're, you're about as close to solid hard mount bushings as you can get without actually putting your chassis through the stress of an actual metal mount. Definitely, you could say that. Because it makes yeah. a real big difference. Like I said, the response, the feeling, and we kind of talked about it. This whole side of the shop here on this side is really about connecting the driver to the floor through the car. Whether it be the shifter, the bushings, the steering, the brakes, the uh, uh, steering shafts, the subframe bushings. Mm -hmm. Everything here is about connecting you to the floor, which again... And by floor, you mean basically connecting the, the driver to the the track right right to, right to whatever surface he's on whatever it is it makes the car just tighter and way more predictable and again predictability creates comfort comfort creates speed yeah comfort is super important too well a lot of people don't know that you guys make is all the beauty products plexiglass windows door cards what else do you have over here we do have uh abs door carts that we make for E30 coupes and we have a four door kit for E30 sedan. So this is the coupe one. We have these little pull tabs. They get screwed in through the back. That's clean that mounts from the back though. Cause then yeah, you, like screws go you yeah. screw through the back and then you don't have to worry about you that when you install it. Anything, right. um, these all come with uh, pre-drilled rivet holes or you can use rib nuts. It has a half cut for if you have roll up windows, you can cut this out and it's in the right spot for a window crank. And then this is the cutout for this little piece here so you can buy it without that right and it comes like this, this is how you get it and if you want to install that you just cut this out and then you put your two screws in there and then that kit comes with screws so it's a pull strap that mounts to the OEM uh, door handle location yeah that's clean um, and then this is big enough so you can actually fit the trim ring the beauty ring on right, the, right handle. the stock handles we're actually working on some E36 door cards and E36 inner rear panels. So we'll have those out soon. Then you have, you have dash, like some dash delete stuff. Mm -hmm. This is an E30 piece, sandblasted, ready for paint or powder coating. All you need to do is bend the tabs. So basically this replaces the HVAC panel on an E30. We're planning on doing more stuff like this for the E36. Same, this is another piece. Basically this is a gauge panel for E30. Right so where the vents? Yeah, right where the, the vents, vents are. Yeah, the two um, vents in the center. Presses in there and you can clean. So you can run oil pressure, coolant, exactly. voltage, and yeah. whatever else your heart desires. Mm -hmm. Fuel pressure. Exactly. That Already pre-drilled, ready to go. And that's one of the things we were talking about, is that you really set yourself apart from a lot of drivers when you start getting into the beauty side of the car. There's a lot of guys who will go out there and race, and they'll race, and they'll race, and they'll beat their cars up, and then they never really come back to like the pretty side of it. Right. And really, like when you guys are out looking for sponsors and different things like that, they're going to really be looking at the quality of your build, the cleanliness of your build, and then obviously like who you are as a person, and, and if they want to run their brand with you. But the big thing is the beauty side of it, because there's a lot of guys out there who can drive 
really, really good, but they're just in like beat up cars. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's a financial issue. Maybe it's something, you know, everyone has a different story, but there are guys out there who can afford to build nice cars and they just don't do it. And so when you do put a little bit of extra effort into the door cards, into the nice plexiglass window, steering wheels, hubs, all this stuff, it really starts to separate you from the rest of the field. It makes a big difference. Yeah, it's super important. It's like some, definitely, like you said, it's something that we look at. Whatever your car is or however your car looks is how you present yourself. So if your car is all beat up and dented and, right. you know, it gives the perception of how, you know, if that's how you take care of your car, it's right. not the kind of person that you are. It's like your hygiene. Yeah. If you're all stinky and unshaved, that's right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, then, yeah. then you look like a stinky person. It's just the it's just the way it's just the way it comes across. Yeah. For you guys, I guess to justify buying the beauty parts, that's really what it is. It's to look a little bit better, be able to attract a little bit more sponsors, and then it doesn't hurt when you go on a date and you have nice door cards and not a big old window track motor or that's wires right. yeah, hanging out. Exactly. You know? She's already upset that she's going into a gutted car, so put some door cards in it. Alright man? It's true. <laughs> They also have hats and shirts and all kinds of other goodies all on the website. You spacers, can motorsport hardware spacers, yeah, mm-hmm. wheel right, studs. Right. We've been dealing with <laughs> motorsport hardware for a long time. We love them. We use them exclusively yes. in all our race cars. They're awesome. Great customer service. Yep. We've had their parts on our cars for a long time. Yep. Love them. I run their stuff as well. So those yep. guys know what they're doing. Yeah. yeah Brian's yeah. got it all figured out down there with the hardware spacer stuff. All these products are out here. The one thing people are probably wondering is where they can get a hold of them. We have a website, condorspeedshop.com. You can go directly to the website, order any of these products. We have t-shirts, swag, parts, you saw everything. And then we have an Instagram and Facebook pages. You can check those out. We're always posting on Instagram, any sales, any events that we go to, whatever is going on in the shop or outside of the shop, we're right. gonna post it. So if you follow Instagram, you probably post them prototype products, things that are coming out soon, mm-hmm. things that aren't on the website yet. Follow them on there, show them some love. They support us, they support a lot of grassroots drivers. They have a whole team of cool guys. Carlos himself is a driver, and this company's pretty much, you could say, built by a driver for the drivers. Absolutely. And so it's cool to see one of our own come from the bottom ranks up to the top, from the Army Green E30, mm-hmm. all the way to where you yeah. guys are now, and having a whole storefront in the shop. Yeah, it's, been, it's just really cool. It's been, so awesome. Support these dudes, Condor Speed Shop. Later, guys.